Sue, we are back in the studio for a radio play. Yeah. From the 60s this time. Yeah. It's <clears throat> rare for us. Right? We feel like we're moving forward in time somehow. It's kind of spooky. Not very far, though. <laughs> well, admittedly, this does not have as much sexism, misogyny, and racism as most of our plays do. Except for the explanation of what a hammer looks like. <laughs> right? <laughs> so when they that thing, you know, honey, with the... <laughs> <laughs> Look, where I'm pointing, I'm pointing right at it. <laughs> Pass me that, that. Um, so, so we are joined by uh, some returning cast members and mm -hmm. a brand new cast member tonight. Sitting across from us, taking out the lion's share of the work tonight, Mr. Dan Fox. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. He's, he's ready Great. to try out some fun stuff. Great right? to be here. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, uh, it's really interesting. I had a lot of fun reading it, and uh, I just, I don't, I, the, the, it goes so many different places, so I'm just going to try to have as much fun with it as I can right. and get as creative as I can with it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, creativity. Yeah. Thanks for Good. having me, guys. Oh, yeah, it's been too long. Oh, yeah. Too long since we've seen it. Yeah. It's been like years. Right? It's been, years. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because last time I saw you, I didn't even do our Gibbs thing. thing. Not with the right yeah. person. Yeah. Our Gibbs World Record thing. That's right, yeah. I was, I was getting all the notifications about that. Yeah. yeah. I know, I was I like... I wanted to, did you guys, you guys broke the record or what? We yeah, you did. He still we don't have it anymore, no. No, <laughs> no. really? No. It got pre broken. But the gift certificate still looks just yeah. as awesome. It does. Yeah, I just got a notification about that on Facebook. Like, it's straight around. Yeah. yeah. The show so it was just so over three years ago. Interested no. now? <laughs> no. I need mean, to no. carry it around and show my dates and right? just be like, yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Mike Donis is in the house. Welcome to the show. Despite our plans, we never seem to be able to like, pick up and do stuff. I know. When was the last time we hung out? Was like maybe I think it's that time we went for a beer. Like at uh, the wheat, uh, the wheat. The wheat chief. The wheat chief, chief yeah. yeah. We, we were, yeah. I did this since then, didn't I? Have you done? Yes, you yeah. have. This yeah. Since then, yeah. It's ridiculous. But, but that's that was it. But that was like a year ago or something. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. It's quite great. Bullshit. And yet like you just live like. Not so bad for me. I know. I blame you. Well, I blame you. So, you know, it just, it just works out. <laughs> okay, good. And then, returning favorite, Charlotte Aglaze. Welcome to that. You just got back from DC. Thanks. Yes. Lucky. Mm-hmm. I went ziplining. No. And I went upside down. <laughs> wow. Yes. While you were ziplining? Yeah, I have a video of it on my That's Instagram. That's not terrifying. Not a plug, but I didn't. <laughs> 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 you just on me now. Was that, was that intentional? Like, did you do it? Yes. Okay. So otherwise, I would have been like, I'm dying! Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is how I go! <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, took but a lot of upper body Imagine the views training. you get, though, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> right? all, all the likes and the loves and the retweets and... Do they retweet on Instagram? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Like repost. Repost. Okay. repost. I don't have the... Yeah. Yeah. I, you guys got to teach me how to do that, because yeah. I'm trying to repost something and I can't figure it out. I don't want to save it, I want to repost with them. Yeah. Yeah. You need the repost app. <laughs> not to do it. Not to appreciate their sponsorship. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, all right. Uh, so you want to walk us through who's doing what? All right. I'm still confused as to who's doing the. There's a bunch of like announcer, narrator. I'm host. narrator. Are you? Yep. Yes. And You're I'm the host and the advertiser. You're the ha. I'm the am. Uh -huh. I'm the ho. <laughs> sure. Anyway, once we get past that kerfuffle, we have Mr. Dan Fox playing yeah. Joe. I got yeah. Poor Joe. Joe, I uh, oh, Joe. I, I think he needs a like a Cockney or, or an upper class British accent, but I'm just gonna throw in a couple. He should, yeah, he just flip back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Slide around. He could be. He could be anywhere by the time we're done. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be. <laughs> anywhere in Europe, just pick your country. And <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and then Lil right. is being played by Charlotte Hegley. Yes. <laughs> yes. Same thing. There may be a few different accents going on. We should totally do that. What? We should get one of those, like, dial, you know, how you make a, a circle and... When you spin it. When you spin it, it, spin it, it with all like kinds of different accents, accents on it. Oh my god. It and I feel like that would be yeah. hilarious, but that also might be offensive. <laughs> but, Probably right. But I mean, <laughs> maybe it's worth the risk. Yeah. How bad do you think it's art? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then Mike Donis is basically playing every other voice in there, mm -hmm. particularly the cop and the caretaker, but also some other random random things. Right. Right. Short fat men? Yeah. Yes. 
it all starts, it all kicks off with the short fact. Yes, exactly. You can yeah. see that part of the end where you have a conversation with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Gollum? You just try to yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. convince yourself that <laughs> you haven't done anything wrong. I wish I could. Oh my god, if I could just like break that up right now, that'd be awesome. That'd be hilarious. If I could not. Alright. Maybe I should call him. I'm going to get some price Alright. So the creaking door from the show Alive in the Grave, 30th November 1964. <clears throat> I have flown, I have sailed, I have moved about this world of ours and ever in search of the finest of its kind. Do we bring you the tops in spine chillers? The creaking door. The manufacturers of State Express 3-5 Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. <laughs> Good evening, friends of The Creaking Door. The Creaking Door is open, so do come in. <laughs> Feeling the chill of these winter evenings? Wait until you're with us a little. You'll freeze with fear. Get 3-5s. <laughs> Get the taste. 3-5 by State Express. Get the taste of international success. The taste that's uniquely 3-5s. Only when no expense is spared in its making can a cigarette taste so light, so smooth, so satisfying. Three fives, get the taste. The taste that State Express has created for you. The taste that has made three fives the king size cigarette of international success. Get three fives, get the taste. Is it three five, three fives? Three fives, right? Yeah. Right? Get the taste. <laughs> the real thing. The cemetery cat. <laughs> the cemetery caretaker and the ashen-faced, troubling, trembling young man make an odd pair as they stand by an open grave under the pale moon. In the grave itself is a coffin. The lid has been pried open, and inside, the corpse of a middle-aged man. The caretaker warns. <clears throat> Uh, well, I've heard about clerks like you, read about grave robbers, I never thought I'd come across one. Here I've sent for the cops, young man, don't you try any rough stuff. I'm a match for you any day. But, but you don't understand. I've tried to save his life and now it's too late. Now, uh, now, don't you give me that. This fellow's been given a decent Christian burial. You've desecrated it. Desecrated, you say? Isn't it desecration to bury a man while he's still alive? Me? Eh? Me? Eh? What's he talking about? You don't think people go around being bare lot these days, do you? I don't know what to make of you. I've watched you this afternoon. I thought you looked a bit peculiar. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing at a pauper's burial. You shouldn't have had a pauper's burial. You shouldn't have been buried at all. I, or you could have saved him. Uh, you better think up a good story. Something told me that you were up to no good. Now, don't you try any rough stuff. I already warned you. I warned you. The police are on their way. Breaking open a coffin like that, eh? I heard you were up to something, but I never thought. I, it's, it's because, because I, I buried, I, I let him get buried alive and, and I was ashamed. Let him get buried alive for a measly 50 pounds. And that, now he's dead. Hey, did you come out of the loony bin or something? Now I'll get a better look at you. You don't look like no grave robber. I'm not. Listen. Yeah. What's he to you, this fellow we buried? Nothing. Except that I, I'm responsible for his death. I touched him. He's cold. Cold as death. Yeah, he's only been in the ground a few hours. They don't stay cold like that. Sometimes we get an exhumation order, we have to dig him up. You'd be surprised how cold they get. He, he is dead, isn't it? I, I brought this mirror with me. The, 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 there's no breath. Look. <laughs> no, I don't have to look. He's been in the municipal morgue for two days, been given a pompous burial. Now then, what's this all about, young man? I want to go out. He was dead all right when they buried him. But not when the ambulance took him to the morgue. You see, I know. Oh, you know? Oh, he was a relative of yours? I didn't even know he existed until two days ago. I'd been trapped in the streets looking for work. I didn't want to go home. If you can call that one room Lil and I occupy a home, it was still ringing in my ears the thing she shouted at me as I left there. Can I do, can I do like little transitional sound effects? <laughs> um, uh, okay. I've come to the end of my tether. I pawned everything, look. Look even at my wedding ring. You slipped on my finger in the church. What did he say? 
and all thy worldly goods. Ha! That's a laugh. You were going to share all your worldly goods, were you? Well, if you don't get me my, some money or a job, I am walking out on you. Do you hear? I am walking out on you. And I'll go and live with my sister. At least I'll have some warmth and three square meals a day. <laughs> oh, don't say that, Lil. <laughs> was it my fault I fell sick and couldn't work in the factory anymore? I tried, dear. I really have. Everywhere I go, they look at me and say, no vacancies. It's not my fault either. I warned you. I can't take much more I know, this. I know, honey, I know. I'll get something today. I promise. It was a promise I couldn't keep. Pounding the pavement, watching this distant play. And fear in the eyes of the world as I passed by. Fear that one day they might become like me. And then I see him. I was coming to Duke's Lane, nothing on either <coughs> side except a huge brick wall. He was a short, fat little man, our steps blurred in the quiet thoroughfare. What was he stopping for? Was he taking caution? Did he think me a gangster or something? I, I suppose I looked like something that had crawled out of a piece of cheese. <coughs> Governor! Are, are, are you alright? He can't be. He's conked out. There doesn't seem to be any breathing. I wonder who he is. He must have had something in his pocket. Blimey, look, look, look at all of this. Blimey! <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Blimey, look, look, look at all this money. Must be 50 quid in here at least. Poor swine, what, what, good, what, what good is this money now? I better call the cop. Will, if you don't get some money or... Sorry, this is... Will, if you don't get some money or a job, I'm walking out on you. Do you hear? Walking out. There's nothing anyone can do for this poor swine. They'd find him soon enough. Well, what does the guy do in a case like this? Beat it, you fool. Beat it with the first decent money you've had in months. Somebody will find him. Run! <coughs> Lil! Oh, jo Joe? Joe, you got some money? That's right, Lil. <laughs> Two <laughs> five pound yeah, notes, Joe. 13 one pound notes, and the rest in 10 no bob notes. It all adds up. It adds up very nicely. Fifty quid, you know. Oh, Joe, honey, I. How'd you get that? How'd you get this money? You didn't go and do anything silly, did you? Just like, like, like what? Rob a bank? I wouldn't know where to start. But how did you get it? Well, you, you'll never believe it. Remember when I told you when I was in the sanatorium there was this fellow there with the same long trouble by the name of. Ted Brown. Yes. Well, I, I lent him a quid. You lent, lent him a quid? Well, I, wh while I was... Well, I, I was drawing my wages, wasn't I? We, we didn't know what the doctor wouldn't let me go back to the factory. It wasn't so bad then. Oh, right. What about this Ted Brown? Well, I, I meet him in the street, and he says he's been looking for me everywhere, so he wanted to repay me the quid. Go on. Well, we goes into a pub, we have a drink, and there was this bookie there, and Ted <coughs> says he, that he, he has a, a hot tip. 50 to 1. Well, I won! Lil! 50 smackers! Oh, Joe! 50 smackers! Oh, oh, oh. I love you! Oh. Oh. Lil and I went to get some groceries and a couple of bottles of beer. I sat on the bed and had a further look at the wallet. Having taken the money out, I thought it would be empty, but there were two pockets, both with plastic windows. The first held a card that said, Harold Maxstead, 26 Fairley Street, Ormsby. Then I looked at the second plastic window. There were strange words printed on a white card. It said, I am not dead. I, a subject to a form of cataleptic illness which may appear to cause death, if I am found, please inform Dr. Alfred Miller, Ormsby, 6641. No, no, it can't be, no, not dead, C cataleptic, what have I done, what have I done, they think he's, 
I, I must telephone, but, but, but Lil, she'll wonder where I've gone, and I've given her all my money. Here, all right. Here, all right. I got a bit. Take these bottles from me, will you? Joe, what is it? What, what time is it, Lil? I don't know. The pub's just open. <laughs> I'd say, mm, about six-ish. Why? G give me ten bob. D do you have any change? I, I need some silver. I, I have to telephone. It, it won't be long. What? I just, I just, it. I just <laughs> have to telephone <gasps> someone. <laughs> You're not going gambling, are you? You haven't got the bug. <clears throat> You're not betting on tomorrow's races or anything like that, are you, Joe? There are those bills to be paid. I know, love. I, I know. <laughs> no, I'm not gambling, but hey, man, I, 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 I need it, please. <laughs> I'll be back in a little while. I just, I just need that. Please, Lil. All right, here. <laughs> so getting shoes on. Joe! <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Tuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that necessary? Would I be too late for the phone to call? Would they bury this poor guy without knowing that he was cataleptic? Thinking he was dead. Ching <laughs> This would be the number of the doctor in the wallet. Can I speak to Dr. Miller, please? Uh, Dr. Miller's gone abroad and he's been away the past six months. Abroad? Oh, no. uh, have, have you taken over his practice, sir? No, 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 I'm a medical man, but uh, if you're uh, in need of a doctor, there must be uh, plenty of... Uh... No, 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 it, it, it isn't that. Uh, you, you don't know which hospital Dr. Miller was at. I'm afraid I can't help you. I must go. My wife is shouting. Uh, dinner's on the table. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Transition. And then another thought sped, it seeped into my brain. Underground, a long wooden box and a man being buried. Being buried alive and I, and I uh, uh, somebody shoveling a uh, heaping earth onto wooden boards. There must be a max set in the telephone directory. <laughs> there was. Fourteen max sets. <coughs> Everyone alive and bad tempered. No, I have no relatives who suffer from a cataleptic illness. Perhaps there are another few Maxteads in the book. Try them. I have your Mr. Zachariah Maxted. You're the last on the list. Well, I can't help you. What, what now? Do I go along to the police and say, look, I stole a man's wallet? Someone might be shoving him into six feet of earth. What do I do? I decided to sleep on it. Sleep? That's a laugh. Oh. Oh. Very delight. Love you, Lil. <laughs> Love. Please. Pinching white. Well, they're putting me in a wooden box, and it's your fault, Joe Ailish. I'm struggling for breath. They're going to bury me, bury me deep. Not deep enough, Joe. Get me out of this or I will make you suffer here on Earth and in the beyond. Get three fives. Get the taste. Three fives by Estate Express. Get the taste of international success. The taste that's uniquely three fives. Only when no expense is spared in its making can a cigarette taste so light, so smooth, so satisfying. Three fives. Get the taste. The taste that State Express has created for you. The taste that has made Three Fives the king size cigarette of international success. Get Three Fives. Get the taste. Music. Music. Well, well, well. And Joe Ellish had better do something about it pretty soon. Otherwise, the poor unfortunate cataleptic gentleman will be stiff <laughs> with the cold. <laughs> but let's see what he does. Do. <laughs> Death. I I didn't know what to do. It had been less than six hours since I saw that chap fall. Maybe he's still there. Maybe if I go back to Duke's Lane, he will still be there, lying. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, 
Joe? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so, sorry, Anna. I, I didn't want to wake you up. It's the middle of the night. Where are you going? I, I won't be on. <laughs> no, Joe. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I thought you'd been acting strange. Oh, Joe. I know I've nagged and threatened you, but it was only because you were getting so down and so happy. <laughs> I love you, Joe. This is a normal relationship. <laughs> Otherwise, you... Uh, it I know I not, threatened you. It, 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 it isn't that at all. Uh, all. All right, Lil, I'll tell you. Then we'll, you, you will, you, you'll see why I have to go. And so, I told her. Told her the whole story of how I robbed a man I thought was dead. A corpse that had no use for the 50 quid in his wallet. So, you see, I've, I've got to find him or, or find out where they're taking him. They, they will think that he's dead now. Oh, Joe. Joe, someone will have found his body by, uh, found him by now. He's probably lying in bed fast asleep. People who have these sorts of fits, they recover. No, they, they don't. After I found all the max things, I googled it. I googled it. I'm back in 1967 before they had to Google. I googled that. After I found all the max things I could, I went to the library and I looked it up. Unless they get assistance, they 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 can stay that way for days, and then they gotta bury him. And you know what? Then that makes me a murderer. I'm letting a man die for 50 quid. Oh, no, Joe. <laughs> oh, what, what, what if you phone the police station? What if you call the Ormsby <laughs> police station and tell him? No, oh, no, Joe. You can't, oh, wait, sorry. What if you call the Ormsby police station and tell him? <gasps> oh, no, Joe, you can't do that. <laughs> they will call you a thief and poo you away. <laughs> Look. I'm getting dressed, and I'm coming with you. Where did you say it was? Duke's Lane? <laughs> Joe! Let's pray he's still there. It might be worse. He might have died for lack of attention. Let's pray someone saw him and, and took him to the hospital, and they realized that he wasn't dead. Shh! A cop! <laughs> well, it's a bit nippy this time of morning, isn't it? You're up late, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there, was a, there was a little uh, commo co commotion, commotion, C commotion, commotion <laughs> in Duke's Lane a few hours ago. So my friend Phyllis told me. Something happened in Duke's Lane. Oh yes, just before I came on duty, those men saw a blurb line in the lane here. Yeah? Drop dead. Dead? They're sure he's dead. Yes, yeah, so the police surgeon said. What, you know anything about it? Oh, no, 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 we, we don't know anything about it. We just, it was just that we, we wondered if uh, there was uh, anyone we knew, is all. Uh, well, I believe they've identified him all right, and if, if you knit around to the station, they might be able to tell you. Oh, I don't think it's uh, anyone we know. <clears throat> Come on, love. It's too cold to stand here chatting. Let's go, let's go to bed. <laughs> you, uh... You married? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have been in bed ages ago. Good night. Or rather, good morning, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the police station. <laughs> no, 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 no. You'll, you'll have to entertain about the wallet. Besides, the policeman doesn't really know. But, Lil! No, it's no good, Joe. We're going home. Come on. <laughs> Some more coffee? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Lil... It's no good, we've got to go to the police. We're committing murder. It's, it's two days now. I didn't sleep a wink at all last night. <clears throat> Get having nightmares hearing Max's voice pounding around in my brain. Pounding in my brain, telling me to save him before it's too late. Transition. You're the only one who can save me, H. They're burying me this afternoon. They're putting me in a coffin. And they're covering me with 
you allow this to happen. You're a murderer, Joe Eilish. A murderer, do you hear? You will be punished. Mm, punished. Mm, punished! You kept saying that I will be punished. <laughs> <laughs> but you said yourself it's only a nightmare. All right, don't you, uh... Okay, all right, don't you go, I will. I'll say that I knew him. What, what was his name? Markstead. Mm. Harold Markstead. I'll say I know him and that he's a cataleptic. <laughs> That's it. And, I, and, and I'll go in. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Aren't you the young lady I saw dead here to plan your night? That's right. Oh, I am so glad you're here. You know, we were talking about someone who dropped dead that afternoon. We were able to identify him. Mm, yes, we were able to identify him. All right, why? Well, he's a cataleptic. And he's not really dead, you know. <laughs> Don't be funny. I've got the card right here. They're burying him this afternoon. He's in the Ormsby Mortuary. Cardiac failure. This is the release for his body for it to be buried, signed by the police surgeon, Dr. Herbert Spencer. He may have been a cataleptic, I don't know about that, but he died of heart failure being buried in a pauper's grave at Ormsby Cemetery this afternoon. Didn't die of heart failure, indeed. Ha! He's not dead. <laughs> what? Well, maybe I'm just being silly. Thank you, Constable. Goodbye. Fade in. Sure he's dead. <laughs> the death certificate was signed by the police surgeon. What does that copper know about cataleptics? If the doctor had known he was a cataleptic, I'm going to stop the burial. Oh, you can't, Joe, you can't. Once you tell the police about the wallet... Where are you going, Joe? <laughs> where are you going, Joe? I don't know. <laughs> to get drunk. I don't know anything anymore. Sad jazz. Even my glass of beer went sour <laughs> in my mouth. I had bought it with blood money. The blood of Harold Markstead. I left the pub and walked. There we were, burying him in a pauper's grave, were they? I didn't ask my feet to move towards the cemetery. It seemed they didn't belong to me. They were burying him as I got there. A minister, a grave digger, and an old man. Obviously the caretaker and the police sergeant. I wanted to shout, don't! Don't put him in the grave! He's not a corpse! He's alive! I couldn't. Those three strips on the copper sleeve seemed to represent the number of years I might get for stealing and withholding information. I ran from the cemetery as though I was running from the vengeance of Maxted himself. Hello? Joe? They buried him at last. The sad door. I saw them do it in a cheap wooden coffin. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing I saw the coffin was a cheap one. Maybe the coffin maker got it. Maybe there are holes in it. Maybe the poor swine is still able to breathe. Fifty measly nicker, fifty rotten pounds, and I turn myself into a murderer. I'll let you in on it too. <laughs> but they'll say that you're a part of the cons conspiracy. Oh no! What what what, what, have I, what have I done to you? What have I done to us? Uh, oh well, nothing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you pinched his wallet when we were both starving. No one can have you up. Uh, no one can have you up for for murder. What's well, besides the point now, isn't it, Lil? He's down there struggling for bread, isn't he? He won't be struggling for long. I don't know anything about cataleptics, but you can't be nailed inside a coffin and only six feet of earth long. <laughs> Look out the window, Lil. It's it's gotten dark already. Well, it's winter, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I know the grave, Lil. I, I'm going back. <gasps> Joe! No, you're not going to stop me, Lil. I'm going back and I'm going to get him out of the grave. Please, Lil, I've got to go. Mm -mm. 
all right, Joe, well then I'm going to come with you. No, no, I, I couldn't bear that. I'm going to do this on my own. Suppose, suppose, supposing he's too heavy for you, Joe, you know you're not very strong, Joe. <laughs> I know I threatened you, but I'm not. <coughs> Ouch. <laughs> it's a pauper's grave, Lil. They didn't take much trouble with him. Oh, well, well, why, why Papa with all that money in his wallet? Well, that makes it worse, doesn't it? Maybe they, they couldn't raise his relatives. Without his doctor gone away and everything. Here, they'll get my hammer out of the drawer. It's got that, the, the thing <laughs> what? on it with a pen. Ah, is for it this? No. No, 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 it's got the thing on the end. For they all have the things no, on the end. No, it's got oh. the thing on the back of the end of the hammer ah, to pull dude. the nails out. Oh, Can yeah, you get I my hammer with the claw? It's called the claw. Where you hit it with, <laughs> but on the back there's the part with the thing that takes out the nails. All right. <laughs> and then here's a piece of a mirror. And here's a piece of a mirror. Thank you for the mirror. I'm gonna need that. God's <laughs> Oh, oh, oh! Well, I have one more line. Here, I hope you're all right, and that you know. What you are doing. It's the only way, though. It's the only way. Transition. <laughs> and here I am, and it's too late. He's dead. Right. Oh, blimey, young man, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes now for nothing. Now, just a minute. <laughs> What'd you say this bloke's name was? Maxted. Harold Maxted. Oh. Oh no, it's not. Huh? And this bloke's name is Sidney Fraser. You sure it's the same bloke? Positive. I, I, I know it's the same bloke. His, his accusing face follows me around, sleeping and waking. Oh, well, young men, come and have a look with me. We don't give them much, much of a tombstone, these poppers. There you are. Uh, Sidney Fraser, born February the 6th, 1920, December the 5th, 1967. I've told you everything. They, they, they didn't. They've given him the wrong name. Now you better tell that to the police constable. I'm sorry about this young man. I warned you. I thought I was too old to, to take you on my own. When you started up in that grave, I ran to the cemetery office and found the police. Well, it's almost a relief in the way. Uh, hello? Uh, what's going on here? How uh, it's you again? Uh, your missus was in the police station this morning with some nonsense about, uh, eh? They, uh, digging up a grave, are you? Uh, there's something fishy going on. When I told my sergeant that your wife came in here and you were buying, burying someone who's a cataleptic and who's not dead, he nearly strangled me. Said I should have taken full particulars. Said I ought to charge you both with causing a public nuisance. And this fellow, Sidney Fraser, he had heart trouble for years. Sometimes in ordinary hospital, he had the pleasure of his company. More often than not, it was a prison hospital. A police sergeant warned him he hadn't had long to live. Your wife comes in here with a cockaboo story about we're burying him alive, as if we didn't know him. Sidney Fraser. In his day, he was the finest pickpocket in Holmesby. Pickpocket? Yeah. Well, only the other day, we had a complaint about Mr. Maxted. Uh, he said that uh, someone stole his wallet. Bloke accosted him at a bus stop and started running. From his description, we knew it was Sid. <laughs> he picked Max's. He wasn't catalytic? He was a pickpocket? <laughs> uh, you better pull yourself together. And now what you doing here? And why is this grave up? No, that's, that's <laughs> all right, Constable. My young friend here's got a bit mixed up. I open the grave and uh, show him he was mistaken. And then why'd you ring the police and say there was a suspicious character lurking in the cemetery? Well, it seems I was mistaken too. That's all, Constable. In fact, we was both mistaken. Uh, weren't we, young man? Huh? 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 pocket, eh? Cataleptics. Alright. Jeez. Didn't story close. Music creepy. Well, well, well. Someone should have told Joe Ailish that lifting wallets off cataleptic gentlemen is a most grave offense. In fact, it is likely to incur a most stiff penalty. I Get three fives. Get the taste. Three fives by State Express. Get the taste of international success. The taste that's uniquely three fives, only when no expense is spared in its making. 
M A. Cigarette tastes so light, so smooth, so satisfying. Three fives. Get the taste. The taste that three sorry, the taste that State Express has created for you. The taste that has made three fives, a king size cigarette of international success. Get three fives, get the taste. <laughs> this is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the manufacturers of State Express 35 Filter King cigarettes encourage you to listen again next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present The Creaking Door. Oh. That's it. And I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. That was great. Thank you for watching. That was a great show. That was a good show. That's a great show. That. Poor <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Poor Joe. Joe, you're not that strong. <laughs> 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 Thief, you have such a big conscience. <laughs> 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 yeah, right.